Hello everyone, welcome back to the Pursue the Hunt YouTube channel. Mike Friesen, Jeremy Braun, and today we're kicking it off with our first video in the Hunter Apprentice series. And the topic today is why do you even get into hunting in the first place? A lot of people have a lot of different personal reasons or sustenance reasons, but we want to try to break it down into some things that you want to consider when thinking about getting into hunting. Now, obviously, with having a hunting show on uh, Sportsman Channel Canada, Jeremy and I, how long have we been hunting together? 12 years. 12 years, 13 years. And I think initially it was more or less, you know, food on the table, enjoying the outdoors, which obviously it still is. Um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of other reasons why other people get into hunting as well, not just for the meat, although I think that's a very important part of it. Um, I think, you know, if you look at two specific sides of it, you can talk about the meat sustenance of hunting, and you can also refer to as kind of the sport adventure side yep. of hunting. I think they're two kind of main categories while people would challenge themselves in hunting. Now, I think keeping it agriculturally, if you're hunting, would probably be more on the meat side. Yep. Um, you know, there's obviously adventure that comes with any type of hunting, but if you're gonna look at things like mountain goat hunting, stone sheep hunting, uh, any sort of backcountry expedition, you're definitely getting a bit of both. You're probably not coming back with as much meat yep. as you would be with uh, agricultural hunting. I mean, either you can hunt moose and elk in the mountains, but uh, much tougher pack out rather than the sheep and goat, but more of the adventure style. So there's definitely the different reasons of initially, okay, why do I want to spend the time, spend the money getting into hunting? Uh, the next is, how are you hunting? Are you hunting with firearms? Are you hunting with bow, crossbow? So there's weapon choice. There's also, are you on foot most of the time? Are you using ATVs and or vehicles of some kind? So that also involves more of a financial investment, perhaps, but also in the planning stages of your hunting, that's going to come into play. Um, now, Jeremy, what, what style of hunting do you prefer in terms of uh, weapon choice? I'm definitely a rifle hunter. Um, that's just my skill set. Not really, have never been into the bow hunting. So um, bow hunting takes a lot more practice and skill set to time that you need to put into it um and i just don't have that so <laughs> fair enough and that and i mean that's another thing to consider is what kind of time do you want to put into it because i mean there's a certain amount that you have to put into it Absolutely. in order to make sure you know you're making ethical shots so whether you are bow hunting or rifle hunting um I, definitely the mechanics of rifle hunting most people can grasp those a lot faster than yep. bow hunting for sure and then coming from more of a bow hunter side, I probably say I've kind of migrated to more of a 50-50 rifle bow hunter is um, the adventure side for me in terms of bow hunting is greater. I mean, you got to get in their kitchen, right? Yeah. I mean, you're looking at, well, for me anyways, my comfortable zone is 50 yards and in depending on the game. If I'm hunting deer, I prefer to be inside 30 yards just because they're so spooky. Uh, when, when they hear that bow go off even, they can, what's called jump string, uh, things like that. So time efficiency, that's a great point. Bring that up. Make sure what you're getting into with what weapon you have the time for. Because at the end of the day, I don't care what you're using. Just make sure you're good at it so that you're making those ethical shots. And then where? So do you live in the city? Do you have to travel far far ways out to go yeah. hunting do you live on a farm you can hunt on your own land like so where and that uh, that obviously plays into the different logistics of uh cost in terms of fuel it plays into logistics of you know do you have a hunting buddy to go with because if you're traveling a far way you end up shooting something how are you getting it out yeah so obviously uh travel plays a large uh role into that as well now Breaking it down a little bit more into whether you're kind of more of an into the meat or adventure, the challenge can be the same in both, I think. Um, sure. I, I don't think it really depends on 
so much the maturity of the animal of how much challenge you're going to have hunting that animal. I think it way more depends on the environment. Um, fields are usually a lot more open, less yeah. places to hide, less places to stalk. Mountains can be a lot more challenging, lots of incline, lots of decline. And I know on the show we've done a bit of both. Yep. And uh, without giving out too much spoilers with what's coming out for season two here, uh, the mountain hunt that we did this year definitely posed its fair share of challenges, uh, stone sheep and mountain goat hunting there. Um, and then the other thing I should mention too as well, when we talk about either meat or spore hunting is, you know, the, le- uh, the different, I guess you could say, legalities within the hunting regulations that you're hunting yeah. and, and the areas that you're hunting in, right? So uh, that will be another video that we'll be doing is just breaking down hunting regulations in BC, uh, specifically our region, and then we'll talk about some other regions as well, what it means to do like an LEH draw versus open seasons and stuff like that. So know where you're hunting and whether that's going to be for meat or for sport, just make sure also that you know that the regulation, what regulations are in place for that particular area. And looking here, yeah, just also learning opportunities. So if you're new getting into hunting and you just don't know a lot, there's a couple different routes that you could go in, in getting started. And one would be uh, the obvious, you know, find a hunting partner who has some experience, yeah. right. That can you know give you some pointers on gear, um, packing food like are you on a day trip are you on an overnight trip things like that change the logistics of it dramatically and or just getting out there getting boots on the ground if you're more of a solo type of person that's great too you want to just get out and enjoy nature always just make sure you have a plan though in place of you know letting people know if you are going solo letting people know where you're going what time you expect to be back things like that which will be covered in more detail in more videos to come but Let's talk about us for a little bit here. So in terms of your philosophy of hunting, what kind of things do you look to gain out in the field each time you go out? Like, are, Or are there certain things you're looking to learn or to gain or to do better of? I mean, you're always looking to improve your skill set no matter what you're doing. Um, anytime you're out there, you're observing animal reactions and, and how they interact and, and how, how to set yourself up better for the next hunt or, or, mm-hmm. or what, uh, you know, things you can use as, as, as an advantage or, or, uh, or how to have more success or whatever. Yeah, no, that's fair for sure. And, and I think, you know, we'll, again, we'll cover more of these in detail, but also before the hunt is just a tip of, are you physically and mentally ready for yeah. the season? I mean, for Jeremy and I, I'm we basically opening moose August 23rd hits and we're pretty much hammered down until November. So we need to be ready physically. Yep. Um, us and our families need to be ready mentally yeah. for that. But it's also you know, the physical preparedness of it. You know, you're going to be packing, whether you're packing an animal out or just day packing, you're going to be packing weight. Yeah. Right. So being in shape for that. Ways to do that, we'll be talking about more physical preparedness uh, later on. But, you know, obviously having an exercise routine before getting into hunting can definitely help with that. Practice pack, uh, packing your pack, practice incline, decline, um, things like that. Go sleep in a tent for a couple nights. Mentally prep yourself for noises that you don't normally hear when you're sleeping in your house, right? Whether that be twigs cracking or leaves whooshing in the wind, whatever it is, those things can be super foreign for a lot of people and they can play with your psyche a little bit. Like, Oh, what was that? You know, you're wondering if there's an animal outside your tent, but go out there, practice some of that. So when you're ready to go out for hunting that you're mentally and physically prepped. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video here today and hopefully that you're ready to continue this series with us. Uh, I'm Mike, this is Jeremy. Make sure you hit that subscribe button Click the like button, hit the notifications as well, so that when we upload more of the great content you're seeing today, you'll be ready to see it.